All right, it's 922, everybody. And Generations, you can just tell from the building that there is something going on in here, like a world of chocolate. Life is like a box of... Whoa. What? Whoa. My socks? Yeah. Do you know what this is? Tell us. This, everybody, is the state flag of New Jersey. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Appropriate for the piece. There you go. Look at that. Huh? Look at that. New Jersey. Look at all, yeah. All right. that's, <laughs> represent. That's, Thank that's, you. The, Woodland Park and West Caldwell is where we go today. Two locations, but we're going to go to the old school one, the OG. Enjoy. I could say anything I want right now and you wouldn't even notice. Clowns are evil, puppies are ugly, Taylor Swift smells. It's hard to really focus on anything when you've got melted chocolate and caramel being stirred and spread in front of your face. But it gets better because this story is one part chocolate, one part history, and of course, one part family, a very special family named the Bromelos. So taking back to the olden times, how did Bromelos kind of begin? In 1958, my grandfather, Harry Bromelo, um, and his wife, Lois, were looking for something to do in the wintertime. My grandfather was a carpenter by trade. There was a little uh, chocolate Swiss chocolatier in town that had a little shop right on this premises, bought the business, uh, learned how to make chocolate, and the rest is history. We're here now 66 years later. The carpentry went down, and the chocolate went up. So this is your grandfather's, and then who took it over after that? So after my grandfather, so he had two daughters. Uh, one of them, Ida, was my mother, is my mother. <laughs> but officially, she got married, married my dad, Tom, uh, by 1975. They joined in full time. Then my husband and I entered the business about 31 years later, along with my sister, Bonnie. So we're the third generation. It's the same recipe since the beginning? Yes. Or you guys yes. alter a little bit? No. no. It's always been the same. Yeah. Everything that we can keep the same and traditional from the start of the business till now. So when you met Jenny, it was like, oh my God, this woman's amazing, she's incredible, and I'm marrying into a chocolate dynasty. When I first saw her, I had no idea about the chocolate. We met in music school. I started learning from her father and her grandfather at the beginning and the guys that were working here. So I learned real quick. I mean, her grandfather used to have a saying that you know, it takes 15 years to become a good chocolate candy man. Yeah. He was right. There's so many chocolate places. How do you make chocolate different? Our butter crunch, for example, we use Brazil nuts on the outside of it. Uh, it's all homemade with fresh ingredients. Brazil nuts. Those are the best because they're waxed. Ginny, did you kind of grow up around this? Was this like your playground where you spent all your time after school? I was here. My bus would take me right to the front door here. I'd come every day after school and would do my homework here, would practice the piano here. This is Ginny's father, Tom. Hi, Dad, How are you doing? Tom. Second generation. I'm Ben. Hi, Ben. We've come to take over. What's your job today? What are you doing? Here. Not just chocolate. For you guys, these are memories that you're selling people, especially when you've been around this long. We've had many people that have said they've been here for coming to us for 30, 40, 50 years. It's a wonderful thing. And it's joyful. It's fun. Chocolate is happy. Oh, yeah. People don't come here because they're pissed off. They come here because they want to be happy. I noticed because you get the haunted houses and the pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns, and then you have a duck. Maybe somebody wants to dress up as a duck, and that's their theme <laughs> this year. That's actually a very big costume this year. So this is all truffles. If you want to get some, you get truffles. Yes, you do. You don't want to <laughs> give them a chocolate-covered Oreo. You go for the Well, I know some people like Oreos a lot, too. <laughs> More favorites below, pretzels, Oreos, potato chips, devil dogs. It's a row full of creams. Mm. If you like a soft center, we're, you've got it covered. Don't even make a comment. <laughs> a chocolate fish. So this is a big set of the fish. No. There's a giant um, pig back over here. Oh, yeah, did pig? you miss the yeah. pig? Yeah. Tell me someone bought a chocolate pig. Oh, we, but we, oh lots. Lots. Again, because you why? want to sweeten them up. <laughs> here, thank you, Jacoby and Myers. <laughs> is that a, not a joke? No, that's not a joke. This is this is the size of an actual chocolate bunny that's, you guys made. That's Harvey. I love it. That my name is Harvey. 15 pounds hollow. Every honeybee fills with jelly. Harvey. But the Bromelos aren't the only ones in this shop that have a story. The molds, not just countless in number, also have an important history. So this mold is at least 100 years old. In World War II, when Hitler was in Germany, he was invading and he took all of the metal from Germany. So what the chocolate makers would do was they would take their metal molds because they wanted to keep their molds. It right. was their livelihood. They would bury them and they fled. Some would come to America, they went all over Europe to get away from Hitler. Right. Well, once the war was over, they went back, dug up their molds, no. 
and those molds have made it around the world. This, this is, is one of those molds. This was in someone's yard. Yes. The sacrifice they went through to preserve their mold, like that's how important this was sure. to their families. Well, they were one of a kind. Amazing. Yeah. How long have you been working here? 42 years. 42 years. So you know what every single thing is without even looking at a label. Those are the and to temporarily join the crew here at Bromelo was one of my goals. So Steve and Ginny put me to work. You were doubting me, weren't you? I was. You had doubts. This is a vibrating table. Can I sit on this? Shakes all the chocolate down, and if there's any air bubbles, it rises to the top. You want to just go for it? I'll, yes. I'll, I'll, oh, you already messed up. Mommy, I want to head. We're going to go over to the vibrating table again. You've been quartering this thing before, <laughs> This goes on there. And then this spins around. Who invented this machine? Well, this is a Swiss machine. I was going to say. I'm setting this for half a pound. Yeah. This is four pounds. Eight. Bonita, my darling, you sure you love Tell me when you feel like you're accomplished. I'm vibrating, Steve. I'm not going to stop this. Be free, Santa. You know what Santa's saying right now? Ah. It's like a torture device. Monday morning, you show the fine. Think of where the chocolate is inside, and think it's not as not as liquid as chalk as water. How you doing, Sandy? You okay? <laughs> they break every periodically, but we try not to. I feel like this was successful. We think you did a good job. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you too, Ben. So in these rooms and on these shelves, a history is maintained. A family business whose job is most people's dream. Melting and shaping holiday memories or just a quick pick-me-up on the way home from work. It's business as usual for the Bromelow crew. Each day a reminder that just about everything is better when it's covered in chocolate.